What inspires you? What is it that makes you want to be creative? To build something with your own hands. For me, living next to the ocean is a huge source of inspiration. I live in a little oceanside town on the southern Oregon coast, and this last year I got a grant to build a bench for my local library. This is the story of how I built that bench. I started out with this huge slab of locally sourced black walnut. After coming up with a design that I liked, I worked up all the patterns and broke down the board into all the rough pieces. I don't have a radial arm saw and I don't think I'd really like one. I use a jigsaw for breaking down most of my large projects. Making chairs and curvilinear furniture can be kind of difficult to nest the patterns onto the board to get the most efficient use of the board and not, not have a bunch of scrap left over. I enjoy every aspect of woodworking and making furniture, but this particular stage of a project is really exciting. It just has so much artistic potential and ideas flowing around of what the project will turn out like. Even though this bench was going to be a sculpted piece of furniture and have very curvy arms and back, the basic frame of the seat needed to be rectilinear and so I had to break down a bunch of square stock first. Even if you're making a wildly shaped crazy piece of furniture or sculpture, it helps to dimension all your lumber and make it square to aid in doing the joinery first before you start sculpting. This last year I bought my multi-router. It's an amazing machine. It's a horizontal mounted router with a sliding table. And I can't say enough about how much this machine has helped to ease the joinery for all my projects. What used to take hours and time to set up jigs and do by hand for mortise and tenon joinery, I can now do in a matter of minutes. And it's been a really helpful machine to have in the shop. Once all the joinery has been done, I like to do a dry fit to make sure everything's going to fit together really well before I glue it together. For the joinery in this bench, I used what's called a Maloof joint. Um, it was made popular by Sam Maloof and his rocking chairs. I'm working on a video right now that will go into depth on how I make this joint and some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years to use it in a compound angle situation. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when the video comes out. A lot of times when I'm making chairs, I will glue the whole assembly together in one foul swoop. But for this project, I thought it would be nice to break it down into stages and glue just the frame together first, let it dry up, and then add the arms and then the back and work it together in pieces. After the frame of the seat had glued up, I could take it out of the clamps and cut in the back leg joinery and route a rabbit for that and the, also for the seat cushions to slip down in. Then I moved on to the next stage of the glue up process, which was to put the front legs and the back legs on. With the Maloof joint, oftentimes mechanical fasteners are needed to help strengthen the joint. I'll come back later on and add those in. Once the front legs and the back legs were glued onto the frame of the bench, I could turn my attention to making the arms and fitting them to join the bench. When you're making a chair or a bench like this that has really wide arms, it is a good thing to pay attention to grain direction so that they are book matched or flow together in some way because besides the back, the arms are going to be one of the more showy places where the grain shines through and it is a good thing to pay attention to it and not regret it later on down the road. I dry fit the arms to the bench and use mechanical fasteners through the back legs to attach it and then it gets doweled onto the front leg. Sometimes it takes several trips to the miter station to get the angle just right. Here I'm showing you a jig that I made that has a mag lock in the bottom of it and it's just a tall fence that I use for resawing lumber whenever I'm doing my, my bent laminations. I have a video that I've made on doing my bent lamination, so I won't go into it further here, but go back and check out that video if you'd like to see some more on how I do it. I 
After doing the joinery and cutting some curves into the sides of the bent laminated back supports, I can work on the upper part of the back. I wanted this bench to have an ocean theme to it. It was going to get carving that had like seaweed coming up from the bottom of the ocean. And the crest of the back I wanted to look like ocean waves. I use a magic marker to draw out the design that I want the, the chair to look like and then I'll take it to the bandsaw and I'll cut out to that shape. The upper part of the back is held in place with mechanical fasteners through the top of the back legs and it's also joined to the, the bent laminated back slats. Once I'm happy with it, I can move on to the next stage. Much like the way that Sam Maloof made his arms, I like to take a bulk of the waist away with the bandsaw before I go to carving it. Even though I've removed a lot of the waste with the bandsaw, there was still a lot of carving to be done on the arms. I wanted these to be really sculpted and really showy looking. I use a combination of files and rasps and carving gouges to smooth the transition from one piece to another to give it the sculpted look. The goal with a sculpted piece like this is to make it appear as though it was carved out of one large piece of wood. To make it turn out right, it's really important that your joinery fits together good so that there's no gaps when you sculpt them together. After the whole assembly is glued together and set up, I can turn my attention toward carving. Like I said, I was going for an ocean theme with this bench, so I wanted the carving to resemble seaweed that was flowing up the side of the legs and into the back. The center crest of the back had a design that kind of incorporated the seaweed and the flowing of the ocean waves into it, and I was going for kind of an Art Nouveau look that I'm really, really fond of. Carved a pattern out with the carving gouges, and then I'll use a trabisher or spoke shaves to take the, the wood adjacent to the carving down and make it more relieved. I put a chamfer on the front of each seating position to relieve that edge and ease that corner so it doesn't dig into the back sides of your legs when you're sitting there. As with most of my pieces, I will finish them off with spoke shaves or planes and then a card scraper to get them ready for finish. For the finish on this bench, I used a Minwax Wipe-On Satin Poly followed by a beeswax and oil mix. The seats were then finished off with some vinyl upholstered slip seats that just dropped into the openings in the frame. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this and I hope that it makes you think about what inspires you and what you can do to be creative and then go out and try something for yourself. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe so you'll be notified of all the future projects I'm working on. Uh, share it with your friends and thank you again for watching. So go look for what inspires you and then go make something. Be creative. Freak down. Solomon.